What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I wanted to dive into an exciting tutorial where we'll learn how to run Kali Linux as a Docker container. Now this is especially useful for those interested in penetration testing as well as network security. And we'll be doing this on a Ubuntu 22.04 system. So whether you're a beginner or looking to brush up on your skills, this tutorial is for you. So let's get started. <music> So like I stated in the introduction, in this tutorial, I wanted to focus on Kali Linux. And if you guys haven't heard of Kali Linux, which I'm sure most of my audience have, but if you haven't, it's a renowned tool for security professionals and hackers alike. And it's known for its wide range of tools for penetration testing, as well as ethical hackers. So if you're looking to get into like a cybersecurity role, this is one of those tools you need to at least become familiar with in order to help you be successful in the field. Now, Docker, on the other hand, allows you to run applications in isolated environments called containers and this combination offers a powerful and flexible testing environment importantly the docker version of Kali Linux doesn't include the pen testing tools by default so I'll have to go through and show you guys how to set those up as well but also keep in mind when I walk you through the process within Ubuntu desktop just note that you could do this on the server version as well. You can run this container within the server version. You connect to it uh, via the command line and run all the ethical hacking tools that you need to from here. So let's say, for example, you set up a Ubuntu server in the cloud. Well, you can get Docker installed following this process and then get Kali container installed. And then you can run all your ethical hacking tools from up there as well. And it also works on other distributions of Linux. So this is not just for Ubuntu. I'm just using Ubuntu for the example. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Now, the first thing you want to do is verify that your Ubuntu system is up to date. Because anytime you install any new piece of software, you want to verify that the system is fully up to date. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the commands that I run. But all you have to do is run sudo apt update. And then you can run these commands together by putting the ampersand ampersand and then the second command which is sudo apt upgrade and this will check for updates refresh the repositories and all that good stuff and if there are any updates it'll run through the updates and then also let's put the dash y there in case there are any updates it'll go down and start the process of updating so let's go down and type in our sudo password because these are sudo commands and it'll run through like i said check to see if there's any updates and as you can see right now there are no updates i believe i just updated this system the other day now that we check for updates now let's go on and install docker and i'll just quickly run through this i'm gonna basically be pasting the commands because this video is mainly not about how to install docker when you want to i've done videos on that in the past so if you guys need to reference that you can check out my videos on installing docker and I'll, I'll probably link one up here to the top on the last time i did a video showing you guys how to get docker installed but let's go down and clear the screen and the first thing we need to install is a couple prerequisites and i just paste them in there so you guys can see but it's a uh, app to transport https that's just a force app to use https or the secure port ta certificates curl the curl command software properties comments so let's go down and get that installed right fast and press y to continue we'll go through and get those prerequisites installed for it as you can see that didn't take too long the next thing we need to do is add the gpg key for the docker repository so i already have it copied so let's go down and just add it right fast but you'll see it is using the curl command and it's basically adding that gpg key to the system so let's press enter and as long as you don't see any errors, that means it added it successfully. Now, the next thing we need to add is the repository. And I'll go on the clear so you guys can see the full path or the full command. But it's basically adding that repository to 
a repository list on the system that way we can install from that repository and this is basically the docker repository so let's go down press enter as long as you don't see any errors that mean i added it properly as you can see this is where it put it just just to kind of break it down to you but under etc app sources list that's where the docker repository is stored so in case you need to go in and and change it or modify it in any way i just want to show you guys at least where it is located on the system but i doubt you have to go in and mess with it now that we had our repository added let's go down and update again so let's run sudo apps updates and this will basically just refresh that new repository that we just added and as you can see you'll you'll see the new repository added so download.docker.com like you'll see it twice you'll see it in there but that's basically the repository that is the location that we want to install docker from which is the main repository for docker all right and so the last step is just basically installing docker now that we had a repository added so all we have to do is type sudo apps install and then the package name is docker ce and all we gotta do is press enter that'll go down and install docker for us and i'll be back when this finishes all right now that docker is complete with the installation we can check the status of docker and just verify that it's running on the system using the system ctl command so let's type sudo system ctl and then status we want to check the status of docker and i'm gonna tab it out it's docker.service yeah let's press enter boom you'll see that it's active and running and enabled so that means it'll start up every time the system starts up but it is active and running so we're good to go docker is running and it's successfully installed on the system now this is optional i just want to show you guys this right fast just in case you want to run the docker commands without running sudo you want to add your current user to the docker user group that way you won't have to type sudo in order to run docker commands and so all we have to do is type sudo and then user mod and then dash a lowercase a capital g so that's basically appending a group for a user and we want to add the docker group to our josh account and i just want to break it all out for you for you guys so you guys can type it in correctly on your system but basically sudo user mod we're modifying a user so that's what the user mod command is for and then dash a which is for append and then what, what we're appending is the group. So that's that G option, capital G option. And then the group name, which is Docker, and then the user account. I just kind of wanted to explain it to you so you guys can see. But all we got to do is type press enter, and that will add our account to the Docker group. And we can check that by typing the groups command. And this will verify the accounts that my current user is assigned to. So let's actually, let's type Josh there. And as you can see, we are added to the Docker group. So type groups and then our user account, and then that'll display all the groups that my user is a part of. All right, so now we can go down and get Kali, our Kali Linux uh, image installed. And what we we'll use is a Docker hub. And this is basically where all the images are located. Uh, just explaining it to you guys. But all we have to do is run the Docker pull command. So Docker pull, and then we have to specify a specific image so Kali Linux and I kind of know about what and then I believe it's uh, Kali dash rolling and we press enter that'll basically pull down and it looks like our permissions are probably not 100% right but let's go on in uh use sudo I know I've done it in the past where I didn't have to type sudo once adding it to that docker group maybe there's an issue with the permissions or something like that but anyway we can use sudo for right now I'll probably troubleshoot that in a minute just to see. But that pulled down our image basically by running it using sudo. Now, let's see if we can run this image without actually typing sudo. I just want to see. So let's go docker uh, run. And I'll have some of these commands down in the description of the video so you guys can kind of copy and paste. Or I might do a article just showing you guys how to do it. But it's Kali Linux. And then we want to pull that Kali rolling image and then let's use bin bash so bin forward slash bash and that'll allow us to connect using bash so it's going to press enter and yeah we need to run it as sudo so let's run this command again and let's just type sudo and run the docker image for us so right now we are connected to our kali linux box and let's clear right fast as you can see it's roots and then that's the id for the docker image that was created on our system you could basically use this as a, you know a normal system so let's type apps updates just to refresh our repositories and you guys should know that but kali linux is debian based so it uses the app package manager as well but yeah now let's go on and install the head 
headless tools. So all we had to do is type apps, install, and then Kali-Linux-Headless. And I can't tab because I think auto completion is not installed on here, uh, but we can go down and just type it out. But it's Kali-Linux-Headless. And then we can put the dash Y at the end. That way it'll go down and install our packages without you know typing Y. And this may take a little time because it's a lot of tools that it'll install. And now all the headless tools that you will run on Kali Linux. And like I said, this will allow you to do your pen testing and all that good stuff. So I'll return when this finishes because there's one other thing I want to show you guys right fast as well in order to get this fully set up. All right, cool. So the headless tools have been installed on our Docker image. Now, wait, wait, don't exit out of the container because all the work we did and you guys didn't see it, but it took about 30 minutes to get all the tools installed on here. Well, if you exit out now, you will lose all the tools that you installed on the system because it'll just basically reset it back to the original image, which doesn't have any tools on it. And so let's go down and save this container image. And we need to do that by opening up another terminal and we can set a name to it, which we could have done this during the original Docker command. And that would allow us to save that Docker image and allow it to run on the system and you could just connect to it whenever you want to or spin it up whenever you want to but let's go down and do it now and just just so you guys know if you guys are setting this up let's say on a remote server then you need to create another SSH connection do not close out this current one that we have open but just open up another SSH connection connect to the server and then follow from here and let me zoom in right fast. And what we wanna do is get the ID. And I've showed you guys this in the past when I did a full you know, breakdown of running through all the Docker commands, but there's a command called PS and we know that the permissions are not set up so we can't just run the Docker commands right off just so you guys know from earlier, but let's type sudo Docker PS. And this will list running containers on the system. So as you can see, this is our container right here. And this is the container ID. And what we need to do, we need that ID to create a copy of the container. And so I'm, what I'm gonna do is just copy that. And there's a command you need to run. It's called Docker commit. So let's go Docker. And let me go back and type sudo first. So Docker and then commit. And then we need to go down and paste our ID in there. And you don't have to put the whole ID. You could have put the first four characters because it's the only you know, container running on the system. And this container ID is a unique identifier. And so the first four letters will be suffice for the ID, but I'll just put the whole one in there since I copied it. And then we wanna name this container. And so we can just name it Pentest and press enter. And that'll create our Docker to the container, which will include all those tools that we installed. So this may take a little time. It all depends on how big the image is, which I'm sure is pretty big. Like I said, it, it installed all those headless tools within that container. And so we had to commit all those changes to it. So I'll be back in a second. Okay. So you may have noticed that the ID did change and that's only because the virtual machine I was working with didn't have enough space to hold the image once it was created. It actually failed. And so I expanded the hard drive on the virtual machine, rebooted it up, ran, ran the command to install Kali Linux headless. And then I went over here and ran image creation for that Docker image. But we have our image created, it's called pen test. And like I said, the ID is different, but just ignore that. That was just because it aired out last time. Now, let me show you guys the image right fast. So we can run sudo docker and then images. And this will list out all the images that we downloaded, which we only had one, which was that Kali Linux. And then now we have a new one as well. It's called Pentest. And as you can see, the size difference, this one is 8.61 gigs because of all the tools that are installed. And so we can actually exit out of this one, go down and close that one out now. And you could do the same on yours. Once you create the image, it's no need to actually still be in this one. When you boot up the image now, it will have all the tools that we installed. So let's run sudo docker run, and then let's just run it just like we did before, dash i, and then our pen test image. And then let's do bin bash again and press enter and it'll get us into our new image that we created. And just to show you guys something, at least within Kali, let's run the harvester. 
I don't know if you guys remember I did a video on the Harvester a while back. It's a tool that allows you to get information, whether it's email addresses or anything associated with a specific domain. And so let's run the Harvester and I'm gonna tap it out, dash H. And it should show you some information and I forgot it uses the capital in here, which is, you know, kind of weird, but it's the with a capital H Harvester. So let's go down and press enter and that'll give you all the information about the actual command or the tool. And like I said, all those Kali Linux headless tools are installed on the system. And we could just run it right fast, just show you guys that it will actually work. And so anytime you boot up this Docker image, then you can run whatever tools you need. So let's uh, try a domain. Let's uh, look at my domain. So keep it techie.com and then let's search a certain amount so let's go a hundred and let's put a space in there and I'm, I'm not trying to show you guys this tool I've, I did a video a full video showing you guys how to use it but let's look at Bing let's just use Bing as the search engine and let's go down press enter it'll run through and check that domain for us and that's basically just to let you guys know that the tools actually work within this Kali Lin Linux within Docker and that pretty much wraps up my tutorial on running Kali Linux within Docker. And I'll walk you guys through how to successfully de deploy Kali Linux within Docker containers and set up the permissions, as well as use it for penetration testing. So feel free to explore and experiment with a vast array of tools in Kali Linux. And if you have any questions or feedback, please drop them down in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it tech.